you got to die before you can become alive. Amen? Because it's really the house of life. But you got to get down to get up. Glory to the Lamb. What a new day in God's neighborhood. Yesterday's gone. Amen? We don't need what was yesterday. We need now. Because <laughs> he's the God of now. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And how is everybody today? Hallelujah. <laughs> In Matthew 25, <laughs> verse 14. Glory. I believe that the Lord has been opening portals to many accesses of his kingdom. And, and in this area of access, we've talked this about before, there are those who have access to many things and there's limitations of access. One of the things he's been sharing with me is the area of how we purchase things from heaven, how we purchase from the other side. There's a price to everything. You can't go to the store and steal. Amen? And you can't go to the kingdom and take. Everything is a price. So there's what we call heavenly currency. Everyone say heavenly currency. <laughs> Glory. And in this heavenly currency, we... Establish currency in the spirit to purchase things from heaven. In fact, you were able to get anything and everything. If there's a certain, each currency has certain value to it. But the currency of heaven is totally different than the currency of the world, even though it's similar. Jesus' face is on all of our currency from heaven. <laughs> In verse, Matthew 25, verse 14. <laughs> now, prior to verse 14, in the first, first 14 verses, it talks about foolish and wise ver virgins, those that are worshipers and those that are not worshipers. Those that are getting access and those that are not getting it. Those that are being filled, those that are not being filled. Those who love God's presence and those who are not fighters for God's presence. And this coordinates with the, the continuation from the first 14 verses. In verse 14, he says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents and another two and another one. To each according to his own ability. So talents here is a representation of two things. It's a representation of ability from God to do something and also Currencies, because there's talent known as money. So these two are coordinated together. Talent, abilities to do, and things to purchase. Is everybody with me? In verse 16, then he who had received five talents went and traded them and made another five talents. So he used his ability and currency. And likewise, he, had, he who had received two gained two more. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. So remember, the talent was associated also with money, currency. So he didn't use the ability God gave him, and the money he gave him, he hid. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled account with them. So he, had, so he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents, five 
talents and abilities. Look, I have used the ability you gave me, and I used the money and gained five more talents besides what you gave me. Does everybody understand that? And as the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful. So he was full of faith. So what does that tell you? What is the currency of heaven? Faith. Amen. Hallelujah. You were faithful over a few. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides them. And as the Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the, your, of the Lord. Then the one who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you would be a hard man. Now I want you to grab hold of something. The reason why he saw his Lord in a different perspective is because of the lack of God's presence in his life. Lord, I knew you'd be a hard man reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed. And I was afraid. Well, does God's presence produce fear? No, it destroys it. <laughs> and I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what, what is yours. Whippy. But as the Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. You ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. In other words, if you were not going to use it with the abilities I gave you, at least put it in the bank. That let them work it. But you walked in fear. You were not submissive and leading to my voice, nor were you a lover of my presence. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has more will be given, and he will have abundance. Abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be what? Taken away. In other words, protection will be lifted, and the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And cast an unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Wow. Again, abilities and currency. Full of faith. In other words, faith is the currency which allows us to purchase things in heaven. Does everybody get it? The level of your faith to determine the value of currency you have. So the, that determines what you're able to purchase. Is everybody okay? James 1. Now we all don't want to be faithful servants, right? But we first got to be lovers of his presence. James chapter 1. You know, I keep seeing the world and the kingdom, and there's such a clash and battle right now over territory, over many things. But you know, it says that the kingdom of God is... It takes it by violence. In other words, force. It drives out. The only thing, way to drive things out is by God's presence. Amen? And verse 2, let's speak it. And that the testing of your currency <laughs> produces endurance. Hello. How good is it? Is it backed? You know, we got paper right now that ain't backed by nothing. Somebody's word. That ain't worth a nothing. Think about it. If you really look at your dollar bills, it says note. That means it's an IOU. <laughs> it's not worth nothing. But they consider it something because they chose to make it something. Then they just make paper and print all the money they want. But it's not backed by nothing. But one day soon, it's going to change around because when the gold takes over and the silver takes over to produce the backing of that paper that's been printed, they're going to have a lot of problem. And it's coming soon. 
Hallelujah. Verse 4. But let patience, your endurance, have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete in what? Lacking nothing. Well, if you lack nothing, that means you have quality of currency to purchase. Amen. If any of you lacks wisdom, ah, I know you say, remember, remember we talked about the talents and abilities. Abilities is going to be the area where you're going to need wisdom. He says here, if you lack, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. But let him ask in what? Faith. Faith. Without doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose he's going to receive anything from the Lord. Why? His currency ain't worth nothing. He says he has faith, but he hasn't shown it. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all of his ways. Does everybody get it? Double-minded and unstable. Testing of your ability to endure maintaining a faithful position. To what? To purchase things from the eternal kingdom. <laughs> Again, we need wisdom and understanding. We are to be stewards of God's wealth. That means not just in the area of faith, but in the area of everything that he has. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Everything associated with the eternal kingdom, we are responsible of being good stewards of it, of God's time. Stewards of everything we do. We should be a walking, faithful steward of God's goods. Why? Because you're the doorkeeper of them. You're the one who accesses them and brings distribution. You're the one that brings it into this realm by faith. Does everybody understand that? So why are so much things being lacked? Because there's not enough faithful. Many are called, choose are, few are chosen, but there's not enough faithful. Those that are consistent, those that are sold out, both feet are in the kingdom, not foot, one foot in the world. Not a weekend worshiper, a daily worshiper. Amen? First Peter. Oh, hallelujah. First Pete something. <laughs> God's good. Thank you, Jesus. First Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Is everybody okay? I know we've shared some of this before, but there's got to be a deeper understanding of this because of where we are right now. Let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reserved in heaven for us. It's incorruptible and it's undefiled. In other words, God has already has a storehouse with your name on it. who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Are we in the last time? Yes. There's been a predestined, designated storehouse and warehouse with your name on it that has everything you need to pertain to godliness and living in this realm until you get home. Verse 6. In this you, regret, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith or the value of your currency, amen, being much more precious than gold. Do you see how he compares that with gold? 
Amen? Because eternal currency is much better than gold. That perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with ex joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Wow. The value of your faith, currency. It's the currency of heaven. The value of your currency. In other words, purchasing power. What kind of purchasing power do you have? See, many people believe that if they ask, they receive. That's not how it works. It's got to be backed by something called faith. Faith. Forever attached, uh, forever uh, attached in the heavenly, into the heavenlies, right? So you are connected. Your faith. Your faith is not in anything else but him. Your faith is in totally him through everything, no matter what you're going through. And God is going to test you and bring you trials. For what? To build your faith. Everything you go through, through your life, the moment you were born again, is to build faith. So you're storing up currency. So you're able to purchase the big things, the little things, and whatever it is. Why? So you can assist those in this realm that lack. We're to be lacking nothing. This is those who fear the Lord lack nothing. They reverence and honor him. Why? Because they're in his presence. See, but many people move out of that faith and have more faith in themselves. That's the difference between the world. They have faith in their abilities and talents and works. Oh, I just get a job anywhere. Well, that's good. That's, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a job, that's for sure. But your, your faith is not in your job. But see, so many people have faith and abilities in themselves. And God is trying to get it out from facing themselves and focusing on self into the area where we're focusing it on him. He's the one that provides the abilities. He's the one that provides the talents. He provides the wisdom. He prov he's the provider, not us. Amen? We go to school and learn. We take those abilities and talents and turn it over to the Lord. The Lord can anoint them. So the things that we do in are bringing glory to his name, not to us. Amen? Is everybody Okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you drunk? Is that the problem? Are you a vessel of honor? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb. Hebrew, chapter 11. How many know God answers every prayer? And the ones he doesn't answer means no. <laughs> he wants to get us to a point where, don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with asking, but knowing. There's a place of trust and knowing that where you, you don't need to ask for it. You know it's just coming. You just, yeah. Unless he says, come on, I need you to ask for this one. I need you to ask for this. I, mean, I need you to activate your faith in getting this. It's a bigger purchase. I'm going to assist you, though. See, the trials we're going through is to build our faith for the next purchase. Because sometimes we don't have enough value of faith, or what we call heavenly currency, to purchase the next thing. So there's a delay. Oh, gosh, Lord, what's taking you so long? No, he's saying, what's taking you so long? Why do you keep relying on you? And then when you don't get my answer, you go somewhere else and try and find an answer from me that it's not from me. You get on the phone, you call everybody else for the answer. You get on Google, look for the answer. You go down everywhere but me. Why? Because I'm not releasing it yet. Until you finish what I've told you to do, then I will release it. See, God does not promote you to go forward until you've completed what he asked you to do the first time. I can't tell you how many people I've counseled with. They still haven't done the first thing that the Spirit told them to do. And then they want to come back for counsel, counsel, counsel. For what? 
You can't even finish the first thing. You ain't going to get nothing else. Hello? Glory. Hebrew 1. Or Hebrew 11. I'm sorry, verse 1. Let's speak it. Now faith is what? Substance. Is substance tangible? Yeah, man. Where is it tangible? In the heavenlies, in the unseen realm. It's tangible. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. What pleases God? Faith. He had currency to buy the first Bust out, man. He bought a ticket out of here. But without faith is what? Impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is what? That he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Who diligently seek him. Faith is the substance used to purchase, to build, to overcome, to access, and to battle with. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. That's why the Lord, you know, Timothy, when Paul was writing, said, man, fight the good fight of what? Faith. Keep purchasing. Keep gathering. It tells us that faith comes... Uh, by hearing the word of God. It also tells us that praying in the spirit helps increase your faith. In verse 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. Everybody there? We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope. I want to say this again. Your work of faith, now that your act activity of faith, your labor of love, and your endurance of hope, or your patience of hope, in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, and in much assurance as you know what kind of men we were among you for sake, your sake. And you became followers, believers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit so that you became examples to all in Macedonia, Acacia, who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Acacia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we have to you, and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to wait for a son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Works of faith, ability to purchase, labor of love, patience or endurance of hope. That's future faith. We're feeding and building up storehouses by faith in this realm and in the other realm, the eternal realm to access and in this realm to distribute. Does everybody get it? 
Amen? All backed by God's word. So he says, you're building, you're receiving what God is saying. I'm telling you that's going to build your faith if you believe. But if you don't mix his word with faith, you'll count nothing. Romans 10. Everyone say faith, not feeling. Ooh. Too many people think faith is a feeling. They get emotionally faithless. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? How then shall they call on him who in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of all good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has delivered our report? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by what? Hearing. Now, it's not only hearing the word of God, by, but the voice of God. God loves to speak to us. He speaks to us in multiple ways. It could be dreams, visions, however it is. But he loves to speak to us, and he loves when his children are hearing. In other words, they're looking to hear from him. Every morning, Lord. What you got to tell me today? What do you want to show me? I don't want to miss it. But that means you got to take time. You don't ask God to send you a letter, right? He already did. It's written. <laughs> oh, Lord, send me a letter and I'll mail it back to you, you know, when I get an answer or what, you know, whatever you want me to do. That's not how it works. That's called long distance. Amen. Hebrews 4. You know, when God tells you to do something and you do it, sometimes it may be a trial or a test, but it's building your faith. By building your faith, you're, building, you're increasing the value of your currency or of your faith. That's why he's checking out, see how genuine, how real, what's the value of your faith. You know, just because you say you believe, do you? Amen. Hebrews 4 verse 1. That's where the man that was, the Lord wanted to heal him. He was blind. And he said, well, you know, you're going to need some faith. He goes, give me some faith. What was he needing? He was needing currency. Lord, increase my faith. Good. In other words, he was asking for currency from God to purchase from him. He never comes to the Lord empty-handed. He never came empty-handed. Amen? I don't know if you all got that one, but anyways. Hebrews 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear, lest any of you seem to have come short of it. For indeed, the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did, did not profit them, not, not being what? Mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken in a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God re rested on the seventh day from all his works, and again in this place, they shall not enter my rest. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was first preached did not enter because of what? disobedience. 
Again, he designates a certain day, saying to David, Today, after such a long time, as it has been said, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not what? Harden your heart. Or was not, the word was not mixed with faith. They had no purchased desire. No what? Purchased desire. In other words, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they were actually listening. They weren't hearing. They had no intention of putting that word to practice. If there's no intention of putting it to practice, what you learn, that's no faith. None. There's no purchasing power. Proverbs 23. Again, people have more faith in everything else than what they're supposed to. You know, that's one of the things the enemy loves to do. He likes to steal our faith. Why? Because the full armor of God has a shield of faith. Amen? If he can diminish our faith in that shield, well, what's the shield usually made of? Metals and stuff like that in the world. Amen? So it's associated with things of faith in the spirit realm. Things that we purchase. And in that, if the enemy can diminish your faith, he can weaken your shield so that what happens is fiery darts come through. And when those fiery darts come through, they cause havoc. The first thing that begins to happen is worse first thinking. Oh no, fear. They shorted me on my paycheck. Oh no, they shorted my paycheck. Oh, I'm going to miss work. How am I going to pay for things? Oh, you're relying on you again. Again, that's how the enemy diminishes our faith. Every time we sow in the flesh, we diminish faith. Every time we react, we diminish faith. Because faith always responds, never reacts. Amen? Proverbs 23 and verse 22. Listen to your father who begot you, and do not despise your mother when she is old. Buy. What? Buy. Buy the what? Truth, and do not sell it. People sold the truth for things of the world. Also, wisdom. He says, buy the truth and don't sell it. What else? Buy wisdom and instruction and understanding. Buy it. The father of righteous, of the righteous will greatly rejoice, and he who begets a wise child will delight in him. Let your father and your mother be glad, and let her who bore you rejoice. Wow. Buy the truth and don't sell it. Revelation 3. Heavenly currency. You know, I got a, a text from a, or an email from an individual that somehow saw, uh, I don't know if it was my testimony or something. I don't know where she got it from or whatever, but she got a hold of me. She lives out of state. And she was inquiring for her husband. I don't know anything about anything more. I just said, share with her, the, the first thing you need to do is basically sow. That's a part of purchase. You want to get out of addiction, you got to sow your way out. Praising, worshiping, sowing in the spirit, decreeing the special prayers. And I share with her about the special prayers that we have to target these areas. I said, the process doesn't begin without sowing. That's an area of purchase, isn't it? Everything begins with purchase. 
Jesus paid the price for me and you. He had to purchase his life, surrendered it, so that you and I would have access. Amen? But then after that, we learn to purchase. We carry on the purchase process in faith. Building our faith. He calls it most holy faith. Building it up so that our faith becomes a currency of value where we have access. No doubt. Knowing that when we ask, we're receiving. Why? Because we have the currency of the faith to purchase such things. Just because it doesn't come that instant or that day doesn't mean it's not. Amen? And there's times when, you know what, Lord, just take out of my account what's needed. You know what I need. I don't even know what I need. But I trust you. You know, what is that song we say? When I trust you, I don't need to understand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation 3.17. He says, because you say I am rich and have become wealthy. Wealthy. Wealthy of what? The world. And have need nothing. Well, I don't need anything. And do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in fire that you may be rich. What's he actually asking you to purchase from him? Faith. And uh, that you may be rich in white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase, and therefore be zealous and repent and get back in my presence. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. And to him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him Hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And that is the word from the Lord there. Amen. So not only we buy the truth, which is God's words, but he asks, listen, there are days when he says, Guy, your faith is not enough for this. I want you to exchange your faith for mine. Does everybody get it? Lord, I exchange my faith for your faith. You don't think he loves that? He loves anything you're willing to get rid of you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lord, I, I, I need your faith. I need to exchange my faith. I, I just sense that my faith isn't high enough for this. Is everybody okay? In James chapter 2, verse 14. You know, that's why so many people do not have faith. They don't read God's word and they still call themselves Christians. They have no faith. Because it's not even mixed with the word. So how does it become activated? It doesn't. And that's what the enemy steals. He steals time away from the Lord. He steals time away from his presence. He steals time away from feeding on his faithfulness, which is his word. And a person becomes weak and easily overtaken by the presence of darkness. And they think that they need to work more and get more money to get what they need. Now, that's just a lie from hell. James 2.14, let's speak it. But each one is tempted. Oops, sorry. <laughs> what does it profit? <laughs> My brethren, if someone says to you he has faith but does not have works or activation, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed <laughs> and filled. But you do not give them 
the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? What a moron. Who would do that? <laughs> but there are people that do, oh, I'll pray for you. Wait a minute, man, I need five bucks. That's you know. <laughs> Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have activation or works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, the, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works is what? Dead. In other words, faith without purchase is dead. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by what? By works and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is also dead. Wow. Currency without purchase is no good. Amen. Your ability is to build the kingdom of Christ depends on the value of your faith. Amen? 1 Corinthians 4. Oh, happy days. Hallelujah. You know, I always look at the area to where the greatest trial, the greatest value of currency. The harder the trial, the more the currency is worth. You know, it's like big nuggets with Jesus' face on them. <laughs> nuggets of faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Let a man so consider us as what? Servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Servants to the anointing and stewards of the hidden mysteries of God. Revelations. Moreover, it is required in its stewards that one be found what? Faithful or full of faith. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or any human court. In fact, I don't even judge myself. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am justified. I'm not justified by this, but he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. In other words, we are servants to the anointing, stewards of the hidden things of God, and able to access and purchase as faithful servants. Or servants full of faith. Second Peter one. Second Peter chapter one. So when you go out and buy a vehicle or something, you are not going to be asked how much faith do you have. Amen? It all depends on who, you're, who the salesperson is. I don't know. <laughs> you know it could be Jesus. You know? <laughs> Jesus could be taking this guy's place. <laughs> how much faith do you have? If he says how much faith do you have, you know Jesus is there. <laughs> but in that, we don't go to purchase something without faith. Even in the physical world. 
Does everybody get it? In other words, Lord, is this what you want me to do? I'm seeking counsel from you, Lord. And he will provide what needs to be purchased sometimes. Not only spiritually, but physically. I mean, things can happen supernaturally. Supernaturally, money can just, boom, show up from nowhere. Somebody can knock on your door and bring a check. I've had it happen to me. Things just showed up, up to $10,000 or even more than that. Many times. Not even knowing. All of a sudden, even the money, sometimes the money will show up ahead of time to purchase what needs to get purchased, not knowing it was going to break down. <laughs> oh, that's why you sent the money. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you purchased it with faith, not knowing it. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 1, or 2 Peter chapter 1, sorry. In verse 1, Simon Peter, bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained what? Like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God and, Fa and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Now, is God's word knowledge? Amen. So the word, faith comes by hearing and the word. So this knowledge is increasing your faith. Does everybody get it? And he says, the divine power has given us all, to all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge, in other words, through the faith of purchase, of him who called us by the glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of, that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, to virtue, knowledge, to knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And for so an extra entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like precious faith or like precious heavenly currency. Amen. Now, unfortunately, you can't borrow somebody else's faith. And you can't get a loan from somebody else's faith. Now, somebody else's faith can purchase it for you. Does everybody get it? But there are certain things you can't purchase for someone else in the spirit. <laughs> Maybe physically, but not in the spirit. Amen. Now, you can pray in the area and use your faith for someone to be rescued or healed. You're purchasing those things. Does everybody get it? But God's going to do it in his way, not our way. You can't tell God how to heal this person. You can't tell God how to rescue this person. Even though you might like to say arrest them or, you know, visit them or deliver them or whatever, you know. But God is going to do it in his way. But you can purchase by your faith and asking that request for God's divine intervention. Amen? The level of your faith, the level of your currency, the value of that currency. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this image now? We're going to close at Matthew 6 since you got the image. <laughs>
Remember, as soon as you begin to rely on your ability, your faith begins to diminish. As soon as your eyes are on you. In verse 16, or verse 19, let's speak it. Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for treasures for yourselves, what? Treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys nor thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. The lamp of the body is the eye, but if therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how, can, how great is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, for he will, love, he will hate to one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Okay, so the money of the world and the currency of heaven. Therefore I say to you, do not worry, do not fear, do not fret about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to its stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you little faith. Oh, you little faith. Therefore, do not worry. So faith is, a, uh, uh, is an overcomer of worry. Amen? Fear. But when fear begins to promote, it diminishes faith. Amen? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the world looks for, or Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Stay away from worry. Amen? Fear is a destroyer of faith. Father, we thank you for your word. We are blessed. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to increase our faith so we may purchase more things for your glory in this realm. You said, as a man thinks, so he is. So, Lord, let our thoughts be upon you that we may be heaven-bound in all areas of our life and not earthly-bound. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.